Hello everyone. Well, it's a little project I'm working on and I uh, thought it'd be pretty cool to videotape the journey as I, as I proceed with it and see where this takes me and just uh, keep track of the progress of it as I go. And I think it'll be a, a pretty cool little project at the end. Uh, it kind of all started with uh, building a simulator and um, had that thought in my mind for uh, probably about a year now as far as uh, something to do on a, kind of as a hobby project on the weekends in the garage at home and wanted to just build something to mimic my Piper Saratoga that I have and that way you know if I wasn't out there flying in my, in my actual airplane then I could be at home on X-Plane or something and flying uh, fly my simulator. I have, you know, just the just the basic stuff now, like a uh, the joystick and the the, the, the throttle by Saytac, and I was like, you know, I want to want to take this kind of to the next level, and get a couple of monitors and uh, grow it from there. But uh, once I started digging into the project, I, I found out that a lot of the stuff is just not available online. And the stuff that is available is not, you know, it's not, it doesn't have that feel, that, that, that feel of realness to me, uh, that I'm actually sitting in my Piper Saratoga that I'm flying my plane. And so, I, you know, it's either, it's either an LCD screen with the, uh, uh, with the, with the, the layout of a dashboard, and you have to use a, a mouse to click on different things to uh, to make things happen. I mean, it's something as simple as the, uh, the Garmin uh, GPS, the 530 uh, that I use. You know, if I wanted to, if I want to change the comms or change the nav, I have to break out the mouse and and change it uh, via the mouse by uh, twirling the knob with by clicking it. And you know, it's just not a, a real life uh, scenario for me so I wanted to go with something that was had a better feel to it and I was thinking well I can I can uh, I'm sure somebody out there makes a, a simulator uh, Garmin 530 in which I've, I've found a couple uh, from several different people and I've, I've reached out to them uh, a couple different ones and I, I really didn't get the feedback that I was looking for uh, there was there was one in particular that I remember. Um, their website was you know dated 2012, and you know I just don't want to send somebody uh, seven or eight hundred bucks for a Garmin 530 simulator, and one the money just disappear, or two I get a product that doesn't uh, meet my expectations. And so anybody that knows me knows that. I really critique things down to the to the finest detail, and uh, especially when I didn't make it, <laughs> because it's easier to do that way. But I wanted to uh, I wanted to go in and and see you know this, this led from a, a huge uh, you know just going home and in my garage making a a simulator dashboard. Uh, easily over a few months to something that's probably going to take now a couple of years to, to do and which I'm fine with because at the end I'm not really you know it, it's weird to say but I'm not all concerned with actually flying the simulator or having one I'm more interested in the process now after doing all this research in it as to as to building one so the the journey is kind of led from uh, the, the the simulator dashboard uh, and, and, and and doing that and into the actual components of a simulator and making it uh, communicate with a program like X-Plane and going from there and so you know I, I, I was like okay where do I want to start you know the, the round gauges for example um, there there are some out there uh, again, they're either you can either uh, I've seen quite a few different uh, techniques, which are pretty cool as far as the uh, the LCD screen behind a, a dashboard, and then you move all your you move all your parts into um, 
in, into the into the holes of your dashboard for that round gauge and that gives you the option of uh, doing many different types of round gauges and many different types of setups but for me I wanted something a little bit more realistic and so I wanted to do something that was going to uh, you know uh, be pretty cool as far as um, you know let's 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 have round gauges actual round gauges that work with x-plane and I know that there's ways to do it based off everything that I've looked at and uh, and then I wanted to do uh, an actual uh, Garmin 530 and I have a 530 and a 430 uh, stack in my plane so you know, I'm starting with the 530 and then we'll see uh, how uh, froggy I am if I want to go, go and do the design for the uh, the 430 as well. So what I've uh, what I've done is uh, you know I've got a little bit of background in CAD. Uh, most of it's I'd say 99% of my background was uh, 2D. Uh, no no formal training in it whatsoever. Just uh, just what I needed to do uh, for being an electrical contractor, uh, doing prints and schematics uh, to. Uh, either for, for building layouts or for uh, panel designs. And so I've got, I've got you know, some experience in CAD with that and, and uh, I, nothing really as far as uh, 3D modeling goes, which is a whole different animal. So I tried SolidWorks to start with because I saw uh, somebody on YouTube was using that to, to, to build a, I, I believe it was the uh, 530 for themselves. and. Uh, I, I downloaded SolidWorks and I couldn't even really draw a line in it to, to, sh to, to tell you what kind of novice I am in it uh, in, in the whole uh, modeling world. And so I went back to, uh, to CAD, AutoCAD, and with the, the 2D experience I, I was able to, I downloaded Fusion 360 and I had the uh, trial version now but I'll probably end up buying it uh, because I was able to, uh, to, to make it do what I wanted it to do. And uh, and so, anyways, you know, I I I, I took my uh, my 530 out of the plane, and I, I didn't want to pull it apart, but I wanted the uh, the faceplate to to match the faceplate in the plane uh, with accuracy. And so I uh, so I downloaded the, uh, um, the the program, and I I installed uh, uh, I, I took I took the uh, the face plate and then I just measured it out uh, using my uh, handy dandy uh, digital caliper there it uh, you know it, it gets me down within to a thousand of an inch of accuracy and so uh, and that's that's what this turned out to be now this this uh, the sketch actually is a little bit uh, bigger than uh, than the, the Garmin 530 faceplate. But I was, um, once I got it drawn up, a sketch form, which this is 2D, I was able to do this fairly, fairly easy. This part was fairly easy, but the hard part for me was changing it from 2D to 3D. And so uh, that's where I probably spent uh, the majority of my time here. A lot of uh, uh, self-help videos and YouTube videos of you know how do you take uh, how do you take your, your 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 2D sketch and turn it into a, a 3D uh, model and so I I, uh, I worked really hard on that because there again my my uh, experience is, is just not there so I got it uh, I got it accurate I mean it took forever to do it for me but I got it within a thousandth of accuracy and I uh, was pretty happy with it uh, when it was all said and done. I was like, okay, I got this, uh, I went from this, you know, to this to this print right here and I, I uh, ended up taking and cutting the, uh, the face plate out and, uh, and that's what I came up with. So I took it after I got it uh, set up, uh, after I got it cut out, and I put it. I just I just laid this over top of my Garmin 530 uh, faceplate, and um, and it, it was 
it was dead accurate. Uh, all the measurements were right, everything lined up like it was supposed to, and I was very, very pleased with it. And so, I was like, all right, now that I've got it from here, uh, what do I do as far as, uh, as, far as uh, making this thing a reality? How do I, what's the next step? And so you can see the, the evolution of this thing uh, going from, uh, from the sketch, you know, to, uh, to the actual size to a, a 3D model. And uh, don't, don't mind the coffee. Uh, I don't have a bad coffee habit. It's just, uh, just something that happened. To actually, uh, uh, you know, making sure that the size was accurate. And then, you know, where do you go from there? You know, okay, so you spent the time to, uh, to draw it, to uh, get it to within a thousandth of an inch of an accuracy, and then to, then to verify it on an actual Garmin 530. And then, uh, then where do you go from there? Well, you end up buying yourself a, a 3D printer. And, uh, and again, here we go with the, I have no experience whatsoever in this type of technology. Uh, this is something brand new to me. I've never done anything like this before, but, uh, but you know, I wanted to give it a go. And uh, i tell you what, the, the, the prices on these things have came down a lot. And so I did a lot of research. I asked. I actually took the, uh, uh, the, I guess the information from uh, uh, from another uh, YouTuber, and he uh, told me which one he uses to make his parts and stuff. And so I did some research on it and made sure that my face plate would fit on the uh, the working plane, and it does. And uh, then I went from there. And so now I am. This is just a, a test plate, but uh, because. And again, I've, I've never done anything like this before. The first, uh, a little, little afraid of it, because the first part that I actually uh, printed out was this little cube, and I stopped it uh, halfway through it because it uh, it started to it had warping. I don't know if you can see that or not, but yeah, it it, it had warped off the bottom of the board, and so back to you two to find out where I screwed up at. I found out that, uh, and then the uh, the raft had actually stuck to the bottom of it. Um, that I had the uh, the base plate too hot, and uh, I think that that's what caused the, uh, the the it not to stick to the base plate. As the base plate was too hot, and so the end started curling up and started warping. So I went back in and made some adjustments, you know, based off of some information I found online, just googling what uh, what would cause that. And, People use sticky tape to do it, and uh, some people, you know, just say, "Now you just need to go in and change the settings on the on the base plate so it's not so hot." And so I've got this one set at uh, the, the, the the platform set at 50 degrees C, and then the uh, the extruder is at uh, 209, which I've got it uh, set at 205. I don't know why it ended up coming at 210, but. It seems to be doing a fantastic job um, as far as the uh, plate goes. Now this is again, this is just a, um, a test plate. But, uh, it's not actually going to work for me because I uh, um, I don't have any supports yet for uh, LCD screen or the uh, uh, printed circuit boards that I'm going to put in. It doesn't have any of that yet uh, because I'm waiting on the LCD screen to show up. So once that screen shows up, I'll be able to uh, to see, you know, if I can keep this plate this size. If I, you know, if I if I can keep it the the size of uh, of the actual Garmin 530 plate, or will I have to? Uh, stretch this out a little bit to accept a an LCD screen that's a little bit bigger and you know stretch it this way uh, to, to accept it if it's uh, if it's if it's taller than than the, than the actual size faceplate that's there but uh, but anyways so um, so I'm waiting on that screen to show up which I've ordered it but it's coming from Japan so it's taken forever to get here and uh, Anyways, once that gets here, then I can start playing around with the, uh, I bought a, uh, an Arduino board, which um, that's another component I'm waiting on to show up. And, uh, and then, then I bought uh, um, the, uh, the switches. I've got all the, I've got all the switches 
uh, for uh, for this Garmin, the, the, the little micro switches, and then I, I bought the two encoders. Um, they're they're uh, uh, they're coming in, and they're they're coming from the UK, and so they're taking a while to get here too. And the only two things that I haven't been able to find uh, that are um, I guess as far as size go and accuracy are the uh, potentiometers for the uh, comm volume and the uh, on off switch and then the uh, and then the volume for the uh, for the nav and so those are the other only two components that I haven't been able to find yet that uh, that I've I've been looking for and I mean I've, I've spent hours and I'm just not you know, I'm not an electronics guy. I got an understanding of, of electronics, you know, from what I did in college, but uh, I am not the, the sharpest on it and, and not the fastest at it. So I, uh, I you know, I'm, I'm trying to find these two parts and um, I might just have to break down and finally ask somebody for, for help on, on these two. You would think that these potentiometers would be, you know, easy to get, but I was able to get these stupid things um, easier, uh, which, you know, these are dual encoders, uh, concentric, and, uh, you know, with, with uh, push capability. So, I mean, you know, this has uh, two, three uh, uh, different uh, parts to it, and this only has, this one has uh, two different parts, and that only has uh, one, one part, but I can't get them, you know, and so I'm, I'm, I'm looking looking to see if I could find them but eventually I will so anyways that kinda that kinda brings you up to speed where I'm at and uh, on this build again this thing will probably take a couple years to do but I am super excited about 3D printing it's something that I've, I've wanted to do I've never done it before and uh, man it, uh, it looks beautiful it's coming out really good I uh, uh, on my very very first uh, well I guess my second now uh, print uh, she looks like she's pretty accurate and you know I'm not trying to move the table around a lot so I don't mess something up and uh, and just uh, uh, so I took my, uh, my caliper and I was measuring to see you know okay well will the, the plate actually come out to where it's supposed to be and yeah yeah it's, uh, everything seems to be right seems to be doing what it's supposed to do and couldn't ask for uh, for for a better for a better start, really. But, uh, you know, for somebody who's never done anything like this before, it looks like it's coming out pretty good. So exciting, and uh, I, like I'm just uh, just keep videoing, and see how this goes. It's uh, looks like it might uh, actually turn into something eventually. You know, so once I get this, uh, once I get my faceplate finished, you know, then I'll go from this onto another part uh, to some of the round gauges and uh, figure out you know how to how to start 3d printing those and um, making those uh, work like they're supposed to so should be fun 